A Scripps national investigation is tracking down doctors and dentists who've borrowed money from the government and left taxpayers on the hook by not paying it back. Scripps national correspondent Jim Osmond exposes deadbeat doctors and the staggering amount of money they owe. It's the size of a massive lottery jackpot, more than $100 million. But you're not about to hit it big. You're about to find out how you're taking a big hit. Well, it's cheating the taxpayers. Doctor, how are you doing today? They are doctors and dentists who made a promise to the government to pay back money they borrowed to go to medical school in the 1980s and 90s. And there are doctors we found who haven't come anywhere close to making good. You're sticking it to the rest of us. From the Catskill Mountains in New York to the nation's capital to right here in Detroit, the Scripps National Investigative Team is tracking down deadbeat doctors. For, for a check up here, we get 50. When doctors like these fail to pay up, the taxpayers are stuck with the bill. Like New York eye doctor Christine Scrodanus, a court issued a $120,000 default judgment against her in 2007 for failing to make, quote, any payments on her government-backed loan. Or Washington, D.C. dentist Dr. William Avery, who owes $143,000 and is on the defaulters list for the same loan program. Or Detroit dentist Dr. Dwayne Sr. He owes more than $650,000. That's particularly distressing to Dr. Justin Peng, a rheumatologist who is doing the right thing. He's repaying $850 a month in medical school loans. Those that are not paying back need, need to be held responsible. But one government-backed loan program we're investigating, the Health Education and Assistance Loan Program, or HEAL, has been plagued with problems to get doctors to pay up. The default rate got so high, the government ended the loan program in 1998. And yet still today, almost 1,000 people owe the government $116 million, including penalties and interest. Tom Schatz is with the group Citizens Against Government Waste. It's not the government's money, it's the taxpayers' money. And people in Washington tend to just let it go out the door and not worry as much about whether it ever gets paid back. The key, enforcement. Remember that eye doctor, Christine Scrodanus? The government finally excluded her from Medicare and Medicaid reimbursements in July 2011. And after 17 years of delinquency, Dr. Scrodanus paid back $120,000. It's good news for certainly the taxpayers. U.S. Attorney Richard Hartunian of New York's Northern District helped convince the eye doctor to pay up. Uh, we also are in the business of making sure that the government's money is not squandered. But the government isn't always so effective at collecting. 30% of the deadbeats have been on the default list since 1995. This is not my first conversation about this. Dentist Dwayne Sr.'s name first appeared in government documents in 1995, owing more than $160,000 from this loan program. Today, that's ballooned to $650,000 with penalties and interest. The last contact he says he had with the government was nine months ago. I don't really know what the impact is of this that I'm doing, but I've made every a reasonable effort to try to pay things back. But when we pressed with this fact, you're not even in an arrangement to pay it back. Okay, so I want to be rude or The dentist didn't have an answer. You can't answer that question, whether your agency can be more effective at collecting that money? Neither did Dr. Mary Wakefield, appointed by President Obama as Health Resources and Services Administrator, which in part oversees the loan program. Sorry, don't have the details about it with me. We approached Dr. Wakefield after our repeated requests for an on-camera interview were declined. Let me see if I can't get right. back to you. When her spokesperson did get back to us, we were declined yet again. But the Scripps National Investigative Team will continue to demand answers. I'm Scripps National Investigative Correspondent Jim Osman in Washington. Congress requires the names of defaulted doctors to be published. We've plotted them on an, intera on an interactive map on our website, thedenverchannel.com, including some from Colorado. And you'll also find a timeline on the history of the HEAL program and additional interviews with doctors as well as med students. Just look under the Call 7 investigators.